restarting. So AutoCAD 2014, we're not going to go over 2014. It's all the same stuff, but it looks a little different, and I want you to be learning in the, the latest software. So um, what we're going to do is under Programs, we're going to go to Autodesk and AutoCAD 2016 English. It's the basic version of AutoCAD specifically made for, well, specifically made for generality. <laughs> um, it's specifically made to be sort of just the all-inclusive uh, computer-aided drafting suite, right? So it could be used for anything. It could be used for 3D modeling if you wanted. Um, but the architecture suite has a lot of different features where it can actually have smart components. It can build walls similar to, well, kind of similar to the way that Revit does. Um, so anyway, we're doing basic AutoCAD 2016 English. So you open that up. Um, it should not say Autodesk Architecture 2016. It should say AutoCAD 2016. Sure. Well, look at that. There's no splash screen. Did you guys get a splash screen? No? So, all right, cool. All right, so this is how we're going to do it then. We're just going to go to New. And uh, we're gonna just going to open up the ACAD.DWT. So here's an important designation, and it's your first lesson on AutoCAD file types. I think I went over this with you before. DWG is an AutoCAD drawing file. DWT is a template file. So it's, it's built to actually read across other uh, files, right, and feed into multiple AutoCAD files. Um, anyway, so we're going to open up uh, the ACAD DWT. If you didn't have a splash screen, otherwise if you did, uh, it should just open up a, a, a new file for you, and it will be that template. Okay, so uh, recap for you. Units, first thing that you do. When you type in units, it should look like this. So for those of you that just switched from architecture back to this one, it should now look like this. Okay, so did you get that up? All right. Um, so like I said, uh, architectural is the preferable language for us uh, to input units here. And uh, precision, I'm going to leave it on 16 for now, um, but you could change it if you'd like to. Everything else should predominantly stay the same. Decimal degrees, uh, if you want more precision, go for it. And I mentioned that if you change uh, scales from inches to feet, when you insert them into you know, other files, it could actually scale the drawing uh, unintentionally. So just be careful that when you're marrying two files by inserting, um, it, you could have scale issues. It, just be aware of what unit you're set to. Okay, so then hit okay. So now you'll see that uh, in the bottom left corner, that's where the mouse, or the cursor rather, or crosshair, is in the space. So if I go down toward uh, the origin there, you'll see that this gets pretty close to zero. It won't be exact down here in the bottom left corner. Um, will not be exact. You might be able to get lucky and get it precisely on zero. I'd be amazed. So um, <clears throat> we learned a couple of things in Rhino, and it took us a while to get there about object snaps, right? So you guys recall object snaps, right? It's the most important thing we have in Rhino and AutoCAD, in my opinion. So object snaps, now in AutoCAD, now that you know what they are, I'm now going to teach you what they do. Uh, or I'm going to teach you first uh, how to set them and, and what they do in AutoCAD. It's pretty much the same thing as, as Rhino, but it'll be the first thing we, we learn here. So um, take a look at the bottom of your screen, and I'm going to pull this up so you can really see it. Um, and then I actually happen to have, fortuitously, um, Rhino right behind it. So let's take a look at the likenesses here. So the bottom layout has, uh, uh, or rather the bottom interface has a couple of tabs. Those couple of tabs say model and layout and layout two. There are also a couple of tabs in Rhino that say perspective top, front, and right, or more if you wanted to add on. They are different. They look the same in both programs, 
but model and layout are two very, very different things. Um, here's, here's why. When I click on layout one, it actually brings me in, in, to an entirely different environment and it looks like a page and that's because it is a page. So when you set up a layout in AutoCAD, it actually is creating a window into another digital space. Does that make sense? I'll show you. So don't follow along on the command yet. I'm just going to draw some geometry here. So I'm going to do a circle, 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 circle. Okay. So I drew some geometry in the space and now I want to put it on a page and print it out. You'll see that when I go back into layout, I can take this thing, which is called a viewport, and I uh, set it to actually view what's in model space. Does that make sense? So there's layout space and model space. Layout space is a paper that you put little windows on to view what's in the space. So similarly, if I have two plans and I copy them over and one of them is rotated and bigger, I can change the scale by zooming in or out. And I'm doing this sort of just offhandedly here. And I can show two on one page. Does that make sense? Wow, this is really laggy. Anyway, um, so does it make a little bit more sense now? So same model, I have two windows. This window is showing just the little dot in the center, or the little dots in the center. And then the bigger window is showing the whole thing. So that's how, when you see um, full plans, we used to have a full set of plans in here or in the other draw, uh, drawing room. I might be able to bring one in. Um, but that's how, when you see like a full set of construction documents, you have multiple views on the same drawing because they've actually just taken a window on, an, on one plan and blew up the scale on the sheet. Okay, so we'll talk a whole lot about setting up scales when we get into setting up pages, but um, we're not there yet. And I wanted you to understand why AutoCAD is so much more powerful than Rhino in layouts because, well, you'll see when we get into it. Yes, yeah, they're 2D unless you want it to not be. So um, you'll notice that there's a, a little wheel up here in the top right corner. There, oh, well, there's not here, but there is in Revit. Um, where's my whatchamajiggy? I forget what the whatchamajiggy is called, but you can pull up something that looks kind of like it where you've got a view cube. View cube. Yeah. Anyway, um, you can pull up a view cube somewhere. I forget how. But um, you'll notice that this actually has little corners. And so if, if, if I click on top, it basically just zooms my view into the top view. Um, uh, there are, well, there's a home. You set, you set the home to be whatever standard view you want. Usually it's defaulted to top because most work in AutoCAD is done in 2D. Um, but you can actually just switch to other views as well. So I click on west and it zooms to the, the west elevation. Or if I click on the arrow underneath, it goes to the bottom side. I can rotate it. I go there, go there, rotate it back. Oops. Okay, so um, AutoCAD, while it's predominantly a 2D program, is a 3D environment. So the reason is AutoCAD actually began exploring 3D modeling and building information modeling, which is like, kind of like the new buzzword. Um, but other, other software packages got, got far um, more efficient at modeling 3D than AutoCAD did. 
And so rather than trying to revamp AutoCAD to create really awesome 3D models, they decided, well, we'll just go out and buy 3D modeling software companies. And so that's why you have 18,000 different software suites from AutoCAD or Autodesk, more or less. It's kind of the way it shakes out. Yeah, similar to Google, right? Like it can't just be one web page that you go to all that for. You got to have different, you know, areas for it. So anyway, um, so they're different. I think you understand. Whoa, that was weird. Um, I think you understand the uh, layout page enough for now. We'll get a little bit more into it. You'll understand intuitively what scaling means once we actually set it up. But for now, I want to show you how to draw in model space. So um, object snaps, right? So, uh, oh, sorry. There was one other user interface I wanted to go through first. Um, if you look at the bars down the bottom, there are a couple of things that actually match almost exactly. The one, all the, don't worry about model or paper space. That's just how you toggle. That, that's another option to toggle back and forth between model, oh, weird, model and paper space. Um, grid functions almost exactly the same as the grid in Rhino. And I haven't really taught it yet, but um, you notice that there's a grid snap in Rhino. Um, if I turn grid snap on, notice it's blue now and bold, um, and I right click and I go to settings, I can, let's see, yeah, snap spacing. So there's a grid snap spacing of one foot set right now. So if I go in here now, my mouse or my points are only going to be placed on one foot grids, even if I'm clicking somewhere in the center. Clear enough? Functions the same way in AutoCAD. The reason I don't teach that grid snap um, is because it's kind of a crutch. So I would rather you be forced into having to be precise with where you're clicking and when and what object snaps you're clicking on, um, then rely upon a grid because the grid is not always going to serve you as a designer or you know a production drafter or whatever it is that you're doing. So um, that's there. Uh, don't worry about constraints so much. Dynamic input. If you notice, when I have my mouse in the middle of uh, space, I guess, and I typed in units, it just shows up in the workspace. Dynamic input, if I uh, toggle that off, right now it's blue. If I turn it off, it turns gray. And now when I type in units, it shows up in my command line only, not in my workspace. That also means if I do something like type in a line command and I go to uh, place it in the workspace and I type in how far I want it to go, it's not going to show up here anymore. Remember how we used to do the we clicked, you know, we typed in like five and then comma and five and it was right next to our crosshair. So I'm giving you settings that you can play around with and you can use this sort of the way you want to. Okay. So um, the two, well, eh, the two one, the two most important things I think that you've got in terms of like drawing lines and placing them in space are your ortho mode and your polar tracking, which if you if you recall from everything that we learned here in Rhino, when I draw a line, oh wait, I'm set to snap. Turn snap off, come in, we got, what am I doing here? Ah. So we have these white lines that are kind of spanning across the space. It's called smart track. In Rhino, in AutoCAD, it's called a polar track. Oops. So hovering over this polar track, um, you can toggle it on or off, or you can right click it and you can set which groups of tracking degrees that you want to snap to. So if you want to draw everything on 15 degree angles, um, I can draw a line here and now this green dotted line that I'm seeing is going to occur at every 15 degrees. Right. And then obviously if you turn ortho mode on, 
when you draw a line, it's only going to go up, down, you know, or side to side. So conceptually, am I losing anyone yet? That's good. So notice now we've learned Rhino or, you know, basic functions of Rhino. And we don't even really have to put into practice with a little project or something AutoCAD for you to understand how to actually put it in, in, in play, right? You can pretty much jump in here and almost draw lines and forms yourself almost without me teaching you. So that's really good. Um, so the last thing then, I mentioned that I wanted to um, make sure we're using our object snaps on. Um, so they're, they're actually located right here. And this is the last kind of precursor thing I'm going to teach you before we start drawing. Object snaps in AutoCAD, um, they're less finicky because you don't have to move the, um, the model around to make sure you're not snapping something behind, right? Because it's all 2D, or at least it is for us. But uh, you can toggle that on and off just like anything else. But when you right click it, um, it's actually a series of checkboxes. So I think there's a way to actually just pull it off and put it as a toolbar, just like you see with Rhino down the bottom. Um, but I usually just, you know, leave it like this. Uh, and also notice that there, are, there should be, at least for yours, these four object snaps on. Right, you've got endpoint, you've got center, you have intersection, and you have extension. So. Those four are going to be incredibly common. I usually wind up turning on midpoint and perpendicular. Those ones um, are pretty important, I find. So I'm going to turn those on right now, midpoint, perpendicular. And then you just click back into the workspace, and it's, uh, it's good to go. OK, how are we doing? That was a long video. Um, are there any questions so far on that? All right, let's get drawing.